Hello, this is Ariana Ivy and Kat Owens from the group E equals MC Hammer here to explain the app we've created. The problem we decided to tackle was bullying, and for that we decided to create a chatting app, not only for people who are being bullied, but the boys themselves talk to others and communicate their problems. When users open the app, the sign-in screen is the first thing they see. If the user already has an account, they then proceed to type in their username and password into the appropriate text boxes. Then press the sign-in button. Once the sign-in button is pressed, the app calls the tiny web DB to get the value of the username, set the clock timer to true, and sets the label text at the bottom of the text boxes to say logging in. Once the timer goes off, it is set to false, and checks to see if the text from both the username and password text boxes match the data stored in the global user and global pass list. If the login information matches, the clock then calls the tiny web DB to store the value of the username status as true. If the login information is incorrect using a label, the app displays the message login failed. But let's backtrack, let's say a user is new to the app. When they first open the app, they will see the same login screen, but instead of typing in their already made account information, they will click the register button, which will take them to the register screen. On this screen, there are four text boxes in one button, the register button. In two of the four text boxes, the user creates a username and confirms it in the other, and repeats the same process with the password in the two other text boxes. After that, the user would click the register button. Once the button is clicked, the username and confirm username text boxes are compared. If they aren't the same, then a notifier displays the message one or more fields do not match. And the same goes for the password and confirm password text boxes. It also compares the username, the user inputs, to the ones whose value are already stored on the server. And if the username ends up being the same as one of them, it displays the message this username already exists. If both sets of text match each other and the username is unique, the tiny WebDB saves them and then takes the user back to the sign-in screen. After the user signs in, they are taken to the friends list screen. On this screen, they are able to see existing friends in the list picker and add friends by typing in their names and pressing the add friend button. This is how it works. When the screen is initialized, it calls the tiny web webdb to get the value of the friends tag and start value combined. Once the tiny webdb has the value, it checks to see if the tag from webdb equals the combined friends tag and start value tag, and if the webdb doesn't equal anything. If so, it then sets the global friends list to get the value from the WebDB and sets the list viewer elements to get the values of the global friends list, which is how their existing friends are displayed. When the user tries to add a new friend, the app checks to see if the tag from WebDB equals the text in text box 1, aka the user the, username, the user name the user is searching for. And then the WebDB finds the username and adds the text from text box 1 to the global friends list. It then sets the list view elements to get the global friends list values, and after that, it calls the tiny WebDB to store the updated value in the combined friends tag and start value tag. If the user tries to add a username that doesn't exist, also meaning the value from the tag from the WebDB equals the text from text box one, and the value from WebDB equals nothing, a notifier pops up and tells the user this username does not exist. Once the add button is clicked, if the text in text box one does not equal the start value and the length of the global friends list is less than one, it then calls the tiny webdb to get the value of text box one tag. If the length of the global friends list is greater than 10, the notifier pops up and says you have reached the maximum friends limit. If the text, yeah. after the user picks a friend off the list, it opens up the chat screen and with the starting value of the list selection. If the user decides to chat with a friend, they would click their friend's name in the list viewer and direct in the, are directed to the chat screen with that person. Once the chat screen is open, the user is shown the text box to send, send messages, a sign out button, a status circle, and any existing chat history up to the last 20 messages. This works with the use of labels, the web database, variables, and a canvas. Once the chat screen is initialized, the variables status and the message are set to nothing and the chat history variables create an empty list the the message variable called the tiny web db is to get the value to the last message if there is nothing there it shows blank after that it's called it it's called the web, tiny web db to set the variable as the status variable to true which shows after 
the users online and gets the variable to of the chat history to show a blank. Once the user is online, it also gives the variable to the chat history show the Tiny Web BB has a variable. If the status is true, meaning the user is online, it set the canvas on the screen to draw a circle and set its color to green. It shows the user is online. If the user isn't online, the canvas creates a circle and sets the color to red. If the tag, retri if the tag retrieved from the WebDB is equal to the start value of the chat history, it, it tests to see if the list and gets the value from the tiny web db. Then it is set the chat history to get the variable from the web db. Next, it uses a group of if statements, which is set to label messages from the chat history if there is less than 20 messages. For example, if the length of the list of the chat history is less than zero, it says the first label to the first item in the global chat history list which would be nothing if the length of the chat history is less than two. It sets the second label to the text with the ver value of the second item in the chat history. It could also set it to nothing and so on. If the tag from the web db equals the start value of the chat history and the message does not equal the variable from the web db, meaning there is a new message, it creates a vibration notification the user sets the message to get the value from the web db called the tiny db to store new new last message value in the chat update to get the message. It also calls the tiny web db to update the chat history, which with the global chat history, the chat update works the same in the way tiny web db works. When the chat history is less than 20, it displays the text and labels, but once the chat history is more than 20 messages, it works like this. For each number of from 2 to 20, in the position of the number minus 1, replaces an item in the global chat history list in the same position as the number and replaces the message at the 20th position in the global chat history with x which in text box 1 text aka the message the user inputs when the send button on the screen is clicked it sets the 20th label to the text in the text box 1 Called the chat update and resets the text box when text blank. When the sign up button is clicked, it takes the user back to the friends list screen and sets the status to false, which it turns to a green circle creating a canvas, created by the canvas turning up. Back on the French list screen, there are also two buttons at the bottom, at the bottom, the task button and the home button. Once the user clicks the task button, it takes them to the task screen. We added this feature in order to get people who are being bullied to come out of their shell and talk more, and for people who are bullying to try and become a better person. On this screen, users are able to create small tasks for themselves to do. On using the list picker, like talking to someone or showing a kind gesture. Once the screen is open, it initializes the global list to create an empty list and sets the, glob and sets the global list to call the tiny web db to get the value of the to-do list tag. If the tag isn't there, it creates an empty list. After that, it sets the list picker elements to get the global list. When the add task button is clicked, it adds whatever task the user input into text box 1 into the global list, then the list picker elements get the global list and display them. After that, it calls the tiny web db to store the value of the global list tag to do the to do list tag. Finally, it sets the text box one text back to being blank. Once the user has done some tasks and stored them in the list picker, they, they can click one and select they finished it. And after they selected that they finished it, it erases that tag off of the list. Also on the 
friends list screen, there's the home button. And then, <laughs> and the home button takes the user to the home screen.